Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I've spent the last few days editing a new video, so today I just wanted to take a little break and do something fun and answer your assumptions about me because let's be real, I'm just a narcissist and that's why I started this YouTube channel. So I asked you guys to send your assumptions on Instagram stories and some of you just sent compliments, which is so, so sweet of you guys, but there's still some juicy assumptions as well. So let's get started. You're a huge coffee geek, which I can relate to and stand. Yes. You are super open-minded. That is super true. I think I prefer to keep my views to myself and just listen to people and ask questions and whatever you do, whatever you're gonna say, I'm probably not gonna be surprised by it. It's actually really funny because I was talking about it yesterday with my friends. There's a maneuver group on Facebook where people can send posts anonymously and someone literally sent a post about witchcraft and how they're practicing it and like, what do we think about it? And so many people were open-minded about it and like we're nice, which was, I don't know. I love that attitude about life. I wouldn't expect you to go to uni like Minerva. That is interesting because probably everyone I know would expect me to go to university like Minerva. You have found love easily. Okay, I'm just gonna be very vulnerable, honest, open in this video. Yes, because the relationship that I'm in, it just felt very, very natural and I've always felt comfortable, I was never nervous about it and everything just aligned perfectly. But I would say that it wasn't easy if you look at my life in general and how many guys I've met that just were not good. So yeah, the, the real love came easily, I'd say. You want to continue traveling after Minerva and settle somewhere different to Russia. I've always wanted to live in different places around the world and Minerva is like one of the ways for me to do it. And like, honestly, after tasting this life, I don't really want to stop. Well, I mean, at this point in my life, I don't see myself like settling down somewhere for like the next 20, 30, 150 years. I really want to live in London. Doesn't matter if we get to go there or not because of the pandemic situation. I really want to live in Australia for some time. I want to live in New York someday. Also, for the longest time, I thought I would never go back and live in Russia. However, now the more I return to Moscow, the more I realize what an amazing city it is. So I could definitely see myself living in Moscow for some time as well. I think you've set some boundaries regarding YouTube. Yes, there are some things that my parents ask me not to talk about. Also, I'm trying my best to keep my personal life and my friendships a little bit guarded and it may not seem like I'm doing that, but compared to how I was before I got the subscribers and Instagram followers, I would just post a lot, a lot of like fun things that we would do. And now I think I'm just trying to like preserve that more, if that makes sense. You could like cringy teen shows on Netflix Guys, I loved Never Have I Ever. Casting a Tamil girl on a Netflix show, that's amazing. The first few episodes, like the whole show was extremely cringy, but as soon as you realize that it's ironic and it's self-aware of how ironic it is, it's just hilarious. So maybe I do like some cringy teen shows, but honestly, I don't even know what are the cringy teen shows now. Like I'm 21 and now on Netflix, I just watch Extraordinary Homes Around the World, Chef's Table, and all the movies they have in German. <laughs> Not that it matters, but I'm really curious about your ethnicity. Again, regarding boundaries, my ethnicity is something that I would like to keep private. I am pretty mixed and I happen to grow up in times in Russia when there was a lot of nationalism. So I have faced really mean, negative, cruel comments from my peers, from my teachers, from strangers. And it's something that my siblings didn't experience. It was just me because I'm much younger than them when I grew up in this particular period of time. And I really hope that it's changing right now in Russia. So it is a sensitive topic to me just because of those things and I've recently started working on like letting go of all the pain. Yeah, let me just say that I'm pretty mixed and I'm really grateful that I have had different cultures around me while I was growing up and it clearly manifested into the life that I'm living now. You seem really hardworking, but at the same time you seem to know when to take time off. I am very hardworking if it's something I'm passionate about. I will not eat, I will not sleep, I will just stay at it and work. But if I'm not interested in it, it's really, really difficult to like force myself and sit down and do it. You seem to be spiritual too. Hi, yes, welcome. Welcome to this community. I am spiritual. Go read some of my Instagram captions if you're still unsure. You believe in astrology or something like it. Let me just say it. I think astrology is a fun framework to look at the world and there are people who practice it and it had been developing for thousands of years. So for me to just come in here and be like, hey guys, scientific method, I went to university, you're all wrong. I'm just not the type of person. I think as human beings, we are complex enough. Thank 
thankfully, to keep opposing ideas in our heads at the same time and not explode. So I'm not gonna base my decisions on my natal chart readings, but I still think it's fun to like read about what does it mean that my moon is in Virgo. You speak more than two languages. Yes, so my dad has his own native language and my mom has her own native language and they're somewhat similar. So up until I was three years old, I only spoke my dad's language. And then I went to kindergarten, I kind of forgot my parents' languages, but I still like understand basic things and that's how they communicate with me sometimes. So those two, but I'm really, really basic level, Russian, English. I want to learn German, but I clearly don't speak it yet. And American Sign Language. I actually spend like a lot of time learning ASL. I really hope someday I will actually learn it and be able to use it. You are in real person as you are on your videos. Yes, I think that's that's true. I'm pretty consistent <laughs> in my personality. I see you as someone really approachable, friendly, outgoing. This is so interesting to me because I remember when I was in high school, people outside of my friend group thought that I was arrogant or like very serious. I think I was just more reserved and that's the vibe that I would put off and I would just like walk through the hole and granted I would like always do my little shoulders back, keep walking, chin up. That's just how I present myself physically. And if you add a smile to that, you look confident. But if you don't, I guess you look arrogant. But I am, in fact, pretty approachable, I think, as a person. So yeah, you got that right. You're not very close with most other Minerva students. I am. <laughs> Even though I don't hang out with a ton of people all the time, there is a ton of people in my class with whom I had, I think, like deep connections throughout the last three years. And I really appreciate those. And I love my Minerva friends. You're the typical Russian girl stereotype. Wait, I need to Google that. 10 Russian stereotypes that are actually true. Russians love vodka. Russians babushkas are real. Russian women are extremely beautiful. Jokes aside, I just don't really know what you meant by that. So I don't think I'm very typical, but at the same time, I, I, don't, I don't know. You're from an upper middle class. You're rich. Guys, I literally made a video about financial aid of Minerva and I've described like multiple times how I work for Minerva. If I were from the upper rich, Upper rich, no, upper middle class, or if I were rich, I would not be receiving financial aid from Minerva. Let me just put it there. You're ready to be done with uni and would sooner not move again. There is a part of me that seeks stability. There's also another part of me that is done with academics and deadlines and stress that comes from that. But there's also a big part of me that doesn't want this experience to end because, because it's just been incredible. But I think I am pretty ready to move on into the unknown and make my way there. You're very flirty. Real? talk. I don't think I am flirty. I think I am friendly. The way I behave with guys is the same way I behave with girls. And with girls, I'm really friendly and not shy. That's the same way I am with guys. And I guess some guys or some people on the outside might take that as like, oh, she's flirting. But like, no, that's literally me just being normal and friendly. If I'm nice, it doesn't mean that I'm flirty. You like to show off your body in a good way. I was not allowed to wear like tight clothes when I was younger. I was not allowed to wear leggings. And what bothered me is that because I had a certain or I have a certain figure, my sister could wear a tight dress and it was fine for her. But if I wore a tight dress that was like revealing or it was too much just because we have different body types. I, don't, I mean, I don't know how to explain it. I was not allowed to wear like short skirts or shorts unless we're like at the beach or something. So now that I'm older, there's something really empowering about wearing what you want to wear and looking in the mirror and being like, you know what? This is not sexualizing. This is just me wanting to wear this piece of clothing. And just because my hips are wide, it doesn't mean that like I can't wear clothes like this. You have never doubted your sexuality. Okay, we're going there. For some time, I did think that I was maybe asexual because because I didn't find many people attractive, but I realized that I'm not. I think it's just that our Western culture is extremely sexualized in movies, TV shows, advertisements, but people in real life don't necessarily represent that. So I have questioned my sexuality, but I'm pretty heterosexual. You didn't like Argentina very much because of the pandemic. No, couldn't be further from the truth. I loved my time in Argentina. I really want to go back and travel around the country. The people I've met there, even for a short time, they're just amazing and I really wish that we can keep in touch and I want to see them again. Oh, I just... I loved it. Moana is your favorite Disney princess. Guys, I'm 21. When I was growing up, my favorite movies were Lion King and Aladdin. And later on, my favorite princess was probably Belle because she like loved books and wanted adventure. And she didn't want to marry Gaston because she was a self-respecting woman and a feminist. If you want to comment something about the Stockholm Syndrome, she had an option to leave, but she chose to stay there. That's different. 
You have a very developed country center view of the world. I think it may seem like this because I sound as an American. Russia is a developing country, even though I've been very fortunate to grow up in Moscow. The rest of the country, and I've traveled to other parts of the country, are not very well developed, guys. I've also had the incredible privilege of living in developing countries around the world, such as India and Argentina, and I got to learn the perspectives of the people who live there. So no, I think because of the experience I've had in life and the people that are my friends, I I would say I have a more global view. The most positive, kind, and mindful person out there. You guys are so sweet. I wish I could just like squish and hug all of you. I'm surely not, but thank you. You always tell people that you're okay, but in reality, you're holding things to yourself. No, I've learned not to do it because when I hold things in, they explode eventually. So I usually share my real mental health. You're a cat person. Yes, but that's just because I have had cats my whole life. I don't know how to take care of a dog. I lived with a dog for a year when I was in my exchange program and I absolutely loved it. So I like dogs. It's just, if you give me a dog, I will not know where to scratch it so it likes it the most. I don't know what kind of food to give the dog. I don't know how to play with a dog, but if you give me a cat, Oof. She's gonna be very happy. You're a virgin. You don't have to answer that. Ha ha ha. Let's talk about virginity. <laughs> I wanted to discuss this for such a long time, but I never wanted to make like a separate video for that because I don't think it matters that much. But virginity is a social construct. Even if you go to a gynecologist, there's no way to find out if a person is a virgin or not. And there were studies about that. There's an incredible TED talk I will link down below that destroys the myth of virginity and the hymen. Is that just something biological? Now on the cultural level, I think in the Western world, women were given this unattainable standard of a perfect woman. Look at one of the most praised women in history, the mother of Jesus, Virgin Mary, who literally gave birth while being a virgin. How can women live up to that? <laughs> the concept of virginity and imposing it on women was also used to repress their sexuality. Don't even let me get into the clitoris discussion because I can't believe women were not told that they can have pleasure. They were just told that their only purpose of their body is to produce babies, although there's a specific ordering of the body that's only purpose is pleasure. Okay, I just... The first full scheme of the clitoris came out 20 years ago. If you want to learn more about that, I highly recommend the book that's called Come As You Are. It's pretty incredible. It's by a researcher. I think it is a must read for young people. On the personal level, I was torn when I was a teenager because on the one hand, even though it might be changing right now, but the culture in which I grew up in is kind of saying how virginity is a good thing because it means like you're very selective and it's going to be more special. When me and my girlfriends were like little, we thought like, oh, we're not going to do anything anything until we're married. But we also wanted to get married at like 19. But then when I moved to the US, I was also introduced to this idea how if you're a virgin, it's a bad thing. It's like a shameful thing because it means that you're not sexually experienced and you should be sexually experienced. My young brain just couldn't understand why it's so different. And because I have this innate desire in me to be good and to do the right things, my brain just had this like cognitive dissonance of like, what is the right thing to do? And you know what I realized guys? It's everyone's personal business. If you want to wait to lose your virginity, which can we just rephrase it to gaining sexual experience because that's what it is You're literally not losing anything So if you want to gain sexual experience once you're already in a relationship or if you know the person very well Or only when you're married and that's your personal choice that's incredible. You do you. If you want to gain sexual experience under different circumstances and just meet a person and do it, do it as well. In all cases, the only thing that's important is to be safe, responsible, respectful, consensual, and do things on your own terms. I have a few female friends who had sex for the first time, not because they wanted to have sex, but because they wanted to get it over with and not be a virgin anymore because in the eyes of the society, it's not like a very positive thing or because of like how guys will perceive them. And all I can say is that like, screw guys or like, like the society, it's your body. Do whatever you want, what you're comfortable with, with a person that you're comfortable with. I'm just not gonna respond to that because I don't think that's important. You're slutty. <laughs> You once used antidepressants, no. You're very adventurous and open to a lot of things, yes. If you literally call me at three in the morning and you ask me to get donuts and drive somewhere, I will get ready in two minutes. You make friends and connect deeply with them easily. If true, I'd love to know more. I would say yes, generally, and the biggest tip on that is just to listen. People love to talk about themselves. If you're very present, you give people space to share and if they are someone who can be your friend, they will reciprocate and ask you things as well. You have always done very well at school. I was never like a perfect A student. 
I had B's as well, but I've always loved learning. And one of my proudest moments of my academic career, even though it happened years ago, was when I was in my American high school and I took a course that's called AP US History or A Push. And that was like the college level American history course that was extremely difficult. And I remember like reading excerpts from Thomas Jefferson's writing and I couldn't understand anything but i didn't give up and by the end of the year i had the best grade on the aps history exam so yeah i liked school <laughs> my favorite subject in school was literature except for english maybe you're absolutely right that english was my favorite subject i also loved literature history biology math <laughs> russian language was also the one i loved because it was like linguistics you are popular is that still a thing you like cheesy movies again real talk there's a youtube channel called pop culture detective please check it out it's so interesting because he analyzes different tropes in cinema in a lot of the romantic cheesy movies that i loved they're just horrible in the way they portray relationships between men and women so please check him out but yeah i do like cheesy movies your friends would describe you as innocent hmm in high school i was the moralist of the group i didn't drink i didn't smoke i didn't cuss i didn't use any cuss words i didn't party i didn't allow anyone to litter like i would make my friends pick up the trash that they would throw and like put it in their pockets even if it was a cigarette butt they would put it in their pockets until we saw a trash can i still like i don't think any of my friends would call me innocent because we don't really use that word anymore. You're not religious. You're right, I'm not religious. There's just a lot of pain that comes with most religions, let's be real. But I think there's a plethora of interesting aspects in each of them, especially if you think about how they've been around for so long and how even before the major religions came about, there were religions before that from which they like took on a lot of values. So I think it's an interesting study of archetypes and mythology and how it shaped cultures around the world. So I don't have the book in my room, but I really want to read a book we have in the house about Sufism, which is like mysticism and Islam. I think it's gonna be very interesting. You don't have a good mental health. <laughs> You actually get annoyed easily with people, but you know well how to deal with your feelings. I don't think I often get annoyed with people, but even the rare times when I do, I try to not show that. You're actually very insecure. I think I am a pretty confident, secure person now, but there are definitely still areas where I'm insecure. But I think it's good because it means that I'm putting myself out there outside of my comfort zone and I'm willing to overcome it. Your hair always looks great. Watch my videos from Berlin where my hair was bleached and you will know that it's not true. <laughs> You're very tall. I'm five foot seven, which is 170 centimeters. I wouldn't call that very tall. <laughs> Stargazing makes you feel relaxed and excited about life. Doesn't it make everyone feel like that? Favorite place in the world is home. Yes. You could see yourself living in Germany long-term. Yes. I think it's a perfect middle territory between Russia and the US. And there's also so much history between like the USSR and Germany, which is really interesting. It's kind of weird to think about as well. Why am I going that direction? Say something positive. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I think I've opened up the most I ever have on this channel. I'm gonna go back to editing and I hope that wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing, you're having a wonderful, grateful time. And I will see you very, very soon in new video but until then if you want more updates and interactions follow me on instagram at denara xyz i love you a lot and i'll see you soon